for this very special episode of Back to the City. I'm very honoured and excited to be joined by Timothy Petrowski and Mary J. Mansfield, who are two of the three members of Yano Mamos, uh, the third, of course, being Grant Hart. Comes Alive uh, is the name of the record. Here is the record itself. Visual aid in our green screen as well. Thanks, Timothy. This is the final record that Grant played on. Yanawamas is the first band that anyone in Huskudu played in post Huskudu, is that correct? It was the first project to hit vinyl after okay. Huskudu broke up. Yeah, yeah. So this was the summer of 1988. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's when this first record came out. It is. Grant was already recording Intolerance. He was yep. in the studio. I don't know what Bob was doing or Greg. But we were having the time of our life in the summer yeah. of 88, definitely. <laughs> I think we were on a joyride with Grant in a um, Galaxy XL 500 hot pink chop top and ended up in the studio somehow. <laughs> there were three different versions of the story as to how you ended up in the studio somehow. As many versions as band members. I think we maybe even have a few versions ourselves. Uh, there's more versions <laughs> than there are bandmates. <laughs> yeah, there might be. Yeah, there might be. Yeah. So for Grants, there is the, the documentary Every Everything. Yes, where Grant and he, ta he uh, does his version there. Yeah. That yeah. might be the first time I heard that version. Yeah, yeah. a yeah. couple it's weeks ago was the first time I saw that film, and that was the first time I actually heard his version of it, and I was quite surprised. Grant remembered it being in the studio, and we didn't bother the technicians to run the tape. I remember being in a construction zone, mm -hmm. and the entire room was torn apart, and mm -hmm. there was no engineers anywhere in sight. So. Right. No, it was at <laughs> night. We were out partying in this. This is pink nice. Tim's version. <laughs> well, I think some of them <laughs> over, it overlaps. There is, there is overlap. There definitely yeah. is. I yeah. mean, I'll go along with the fact that we were in that that pink convertible car. Because <laughs> I know something <laughs> happened in that pink convertible. I, that's for real. That I mean, and nobody's making anything up. I mean, it's yeah. it's genuine inaccuracies, you yes. know. Yeah. I mean, of course, it's yeah. just recall, you yeah. know. And it is, after all, like 29 years ago that we're talking about 1988. Yeah. Um, so um, maybe it's just natural that you would have some inconsistencies in the memory of it, but. But I do remember the car. I do remember us. We were hanging out with Grant. I mean, Grant was our bud, and we were hanging out, having fun. And and I, and Grant was in the studio at Creation, Creation. Yeah. doing Intolerance. So all of that is easy. The thing that was most suspect in the film, his version, was that he said, "I didn't even bother to have a producer there or anyone roll any tape." And I'm like. We were drunk, and we were, <laughs> and we were just jamming. And I was like, "Man, this sounds pretty cool. I'm gonna run out in the truck and grab a boombox and record this." And everybody's like, "Okay, yeah, cool." And then we recorded it, and so that's how it kind of came about. It was a little. That's where we deviated a little bit. See, I remember being in treatment for alcohol, like I think my first time. Yes. And I remember Grant bringing up a cassette copy of it that J.D. Tomzak had done the equalization. There's one other credit on the back besides Jane Grant and I, and it's J.D. Tomzak for equalization, it says. So so this cassette, this cassette, and it was a lousy boombox. I mean, this was anything but high. Because that's what you go and grab from it. Right, yeah. and it was just like, you know, I'm gonna record this. We had no, I mean, I had no idea. I don't know what was going on in Grant's mind, but I don't think Jane and I could say that we had any idea that A, we had, we're about to become a band together in all of this, or that B, this is gonna end up on New Alliance Records, yeah, and that is. Greg Ginn, like, he basically signed it without ever having heard it. And again, I mean, that's what, that detail, I think, goes back to the fact that nothing had been done by any of the Husker Du people, other than the fact that Grant was recording. I don't know what Bob was doing, but nothing had come out. And so I think one of the reasons that we got some of the kind of slack, like the fire show we talked yeah, about. Two. Fire show in the first half in the main room. Right, which, you know, generated a lot of smoke. It was dangerous even to look at. Eventually, some of the 
those tapes that, that I told you that we will do, that we'll release, that Jan is working on with, yep. will show more footage of the fire show. We have it on tape. Um, and it's visually pretty interesting because it looks like the place is on fire. It was shot in hell, apparently. So for people who aren't familiar with the fire show, especially for like listeners in, in England, um, so this is in the First Avenue main room. By this point, you are a street piece. You have become a band, obviously, you're performing a show. How many shows did you play in the, in the mid-80s? Uh... I'd say five. I think, I think we have five on tape, or four, on, that we, we've got tape of almost all of them. Yeah. On video. There's five or six. People are telling me that we had other shows. I don't remember. I think um, yeah, I in the Rossmore building, mm -hmm. people are telling me they remember seeing us play there, but yeah. That's a long time ago, but yeah. for sure we had just a handful of shows, five or six shows. Um, the main room was a pretty big one by then. Yeah. That was the we initial one. We had spent one, our entire think. summer just being Yanomamos and having a really good time. And before the show, Tim and Grant and I went to the hardware store and picked up some kerosene. Mm -hmm. And we showed up and we asked to go up into storage at First Avenue and we brought down their tiki torches and we brought a grill with us. Yep. And we just put the kerosene in, in the grill and, and the tiki torches and started everything on fire at the beginning of the show. But what we didn't realize is that it like creates black smoke. Yes. So the entire main room filled up with black smoke. And well, I mean, you could breathe, but what we heard later on, I mean, maybe we're, maybe we're Maybe just nothing will be. The, the two of us will not ever. I mean, I mean, <laughs> no I mean maybe, but I mean, one We're thing. We're okay with that. You know, yeah, yeah, and that's just how that's we great. are, I guess. I mean, it's not. But, but I just want to have you know that at the time, it wasn't like the room was full of black smoke so much like that you couldn't see, I don't think. <laughs> but but what I what I understand is that after the show was over, first Ave the First Avenue people greeted us at the stage, yep. and they said it was almost like it was this, um, oh what would you say like a consolation that they delivered. They said you will play here again, but no, no fire, not with fire. <laughs> I mean, so there's where we agree. Right? That's, that was the terminology. That was the exact contract was no fires. Yeah. So no more fire at First Avenue, but there would be more fire as demonstrated here. So what can we see on the back cover of the new record? Well, out? the thing that I love the most about the back cover is that this is a photograph that Grant took of... Yeah. Um, one of the pieces of art I was working on, which yeah. is, I worked with water and electricity, so mm -hmm. pouring like cold water over hot light bulbs and light bulbs underwater in buckets and jars. So he captured this one as it imploded, which is yeah. gorgeous in his backyard. And this was 1988. So this was during the summer of 1988. The, the so, Yadam yeah. summer. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's a real treasure. For this piece and it's cool that grant shot the photo yeah. and it's such a cool photo yeah. um, of a work of art by mary jane and so the this cover too is like got input from all of us and yeah. one oh, of the things on. um well i shot the cover photo yeah. so this beautiful green photograph here what is it it is the bathroom at the kitty cat club yeah. It's the brick, and it's also the camera's moving. It's when I first got my very first iPhone, yeah. and I was just still this like, hadn't done anything with it, and so I was making abstract pictures, and, yeah. and I made this one, and I'm, later on when we were thinking about the album cover, and we talked quite a bit about it, I mean, the easiest thing for Yanomamos was playing. Mm -hmm. But some of the other stuff, like just like telling stories, or <laughs> or making an album cover, were that was complicated. One other complicated. thing I want to point out that though, and I think it's hard to see with this plastic on here. I yeah. mean, yeah. the cover anyway. It's kind of elusive. Like as you shift it, it pops out and disappears. But Grant actually hand drew the Anamamos logo. As he did on the first one too. Yes, so Grant, so. this is all Grant's work, hand drawn, as is this, and this is Yanomamo's crown. Yes. Um, what, what does that mean? What does it well, mean? they're an Indian tribe in Venezuela, bordering on Brazil. Um, 
But there was a friend of mine from Venezuela who was around in 88, who was a dear friend of mine, like we were sort of inseparable. Yeah. And so Ruben had this crown, he actually had a Yanomamos crown. And he also had a drinking vessel, which was a gourd that had been in, incised and was really beautiful with like a cork kind of material. And it, what is significant about that specific tribe? Why the is? real thing about it is that they were known for being untamable and wild mm -hmm. and just very like unaffected by um, modern culture.